Have you ever feared that anything you do or anywhere you go has a darker side to it? Well, get ready for these three true scary, unexplainable stories. When I was 17, our neighbor's son died from a drug overdose. He had graduated high school the night before. I had seen the guy around, but never really interacted with him. However, his dad and mine were the typical close slash helpful neighbors, so I had developed a slight friendship with his father. Anyways, a few weeks pass and his dad comes over with a box of things he wanted to get rid of, all belonging to Nathan, his son. He asked if I wanted the things, and I said sure. It was pretty awkward, but I felt like he needed me to have them. In the box was a pair of light blue and white Jordans. Pretty old, but I figured I could use them for weed eating and typical yard work. I later realized there was something written on the tongue of the shoes. NB, Nathan Black. That gave me chills, not sure why. It took me realizing his son had written on the shoes to be weirded out by wearing them, but it did. This wasn't the creepiest part though. A few weeks go by and I'm home alone. I leave my room and head down the hallway towards the kitchen. It's pitch black and as soon as I round the corner, I make out a white figure about 15 feet ahead of me. It was so strange because I didn't feel fear, more like a weird safe feeling. I blinked a bunch of times and I could make out Nathan just staring at me. It took a few seconds but then I smashed the hallway light switch as hard as I could and he went away. It happened a few more times when I was living there. I feel like the kid was watching over me. Either that or he was pissed I was slowly ruining his Jordans. I was once told to pick up my brother from school, so I was walking through a few narrow pathways where I saw him waving at me and he started running. I thought this was an invitation to chase after him, so I obliged and was catching up before I reached a cross path where he had just vanished. I didn't think much of it until we were discussing it when I arrived at the house and he swore on his life that he did not see me on the way home and he walked with his friends. About two years after my uncle killed himself, we had a big 60th birthday party for my grandmother. We bought the helium balloons home to her condo after the party. One of them started following her, including going down under door frames and bulkheads, then going back up to the ceiling. We never saw it. It would just turn up. It was printed, I love you mom.